Good afternoon. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of The Edge on IC Radio, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be talking about gardening today. And another thing we're going to talk about is 10 natural ways to keep bugs out of your garden. Now some bugs are good bugs, okay? <laughs> so don't get rid of all of them, but there are so many natural ways we can do it without adding herbicides or any poisonous and chemicals and things like that to your food. And to your plants as well, because when it rains, guess what? It goes down into the grass, goes down, may find its way into your garden. So that's another reason that we want to do things the absolute natural way. Before we get started, I found this article. It's actually on um, birdsandblooms.com. I love that magazine. It's full of all kinds of fantastic stuff. So let's look at this video. It's only about a minute or so, and I'll be right back. <music> You know, on some level, it's kind of hard for me to shift into um, how to keep birds away from feeders. But even in the Kaufman household, there are times when we ponder how do we keep these birds away from our feeders. Now, bully birds tend to be larger birds, so there are a few things that you can do. Um, this is a big deal in the industry, so there are feeders that have been designed that sit in the middle of a wire cage. And the cage is constructed so that small birds can get through the squares, but larger birds, those bully birds, can't make it through to the feeder. And those work really effectively. Now, if you're trying to keep bully birds away from your suet cakes, um, you know, they'll, they'll gobble those down in no time flat. So there are feeders that have been designed that only allow access from underneath the feeder. The larger bully birds, the cowbirds and blackbirds and starlings, are not agile enough to hang upside down and access the feeder from underneath, but the smaller birds, like your nuthatches and chickadees and downy woodpeckers, they can. So that's a really effective way to keep bully birds away from your suet cakes. <music> Fantastic advice. I really love that. I love birds and I love looking at them. I don't want them taking my berries though. <laughs> so let's think about some natural ways to do that. First of all, start with clean soil. I really believe in the concrete block garden. It's where I use the big, it's like the big 16 inches and there, now there are two little holes on the inside. Okay. So what we'd like to do is double those. So I'll have a concrete block here, a concrete block here. That takes care of, care of two plants right there. I really think think that helps to is you've got good clean soil and compost that we use that we developed our own self so it has no comp no, nothing in it just what we put in it no chemicals no nothing like that and so all you do is just let your garden grow you get a few weeds in there. there's gonna be a few little birds that are gonna fly it over and dump something if you know what I mean into your little garden so you could have a couple of of weeds that come through but so easy such low maintenance right there I want to it's just it's an absolutely wonderful look at those aren't they beautiful my tiger lilies are about to start blooming by the way as soon as they start blooming I'm gonna go in ahead and and put a picture up there so you can see my tiger that's my favorite flower the tiger lily good beautiful vibrant orange, a bunch of yellows in it, black, it's just beautiful. So start with clean soil. So that can actually deter garden insects, but it also takes time to prepare. So here's a good method right here. Okay, just like I mentioned just a few seconds ago, you want to first, um, um, you want to till in organic matter like compost, which we have our own. So this is from grass cutting clippings, um, leftover vegetable peels, stuff like that. And all that goes into the compost pile. Um, any branches that may fall off of, the, off of the trees due to storms or whatever, we get those and we put that in there too. It takes a while to decompose um, unless you want to get a, one of those big pitchforks and you can turn it and it happens even quicker. Um, you know you got good compost when you see these little worms that are all in your... I love worms now. There was a time I did ick, you know, only for fishing. But I love worms. That means you've got really good soil. So till the good stuff in. Now when the growing... You need to do this when the growing season begins. This helps keep everything clean by adding natural elements and compounds that help keep the pest away. Now after tilling, you want to cover the garden like you've seen mine with black plastic or cardboard for six months. The heat that builds up underneath will kill most garden pests, their eggs, weeds, parasites, and a host of other harmful microorganisms. After removing the plastic, you can lightly cultivate the soil 
you're ready for planting. So I like to do this in the fall time of the year. So we, we've just about cut the grass all we're going to do. Um, a great way to do this is to get your hose out and wherever you want the, little, the new garden area to be, go ahead and spray it down really, really good. It's good to do it now during hot weather as well. And then what you'll do is put your black, now get the thickest, the best you can get, okay, don't get the cheap stuff. Now I'm not talking about garbage bags. I'm talking about this real thick plastic. You can get it at Lowe's. They've got it out there. You can get it on Amazon too. And just roll it out. Well, for, wait first, number one, put your cardboard out there on, on top of the watered grass. Okay, you don't even have to till anything up. So do that and then put the black plastic on top of it. Now you're going to get a lot of wind in the winter time, okay? So make sure you got plenty of blocks holding that down. And then in the spring when you're ready to have a garden, very little tilling and it's going to be compost all by itself. As a matter of fact, some of that grass cutting that clippings that you have, if you're going ahead, okay, do this first. Go ahead and put your the um, wet the ground real good, soak it up really good. And then you put um, grass cuttings on there, put your cardboard on top, more grass cuttings, your black plastic, you're set for next year. It takes all the work out of it. And you've got good, clean compost ready for a garden. Okay, let's see. Um, buy disease-resistant seeds, by the way. Um, be real careful about that. Now, we have our own seeds that we've been collecting for a long time. No chemical, no reproduction of anything. But this is what they say at birdsandblooms.com. So it's easier to prevent diseases and pests than it is to get rid of them. So after they arrive in your garden. When you look at seeds in a catalog, look for letters like these. V is in Victor, F is in Fizel, <laughs> N is in Nancy, or T as in Tom after the name of a seed. Now they indicate problems to which the seeds is most resistant. Now V and F stand for, I can't even pronounce this, so I hope I'm not butchering it up too bad, um, Versalinium and Fusarium. These are two diseases that affect tomatoes. Okay, now N is for nematodes and T is for tobacco mosaic virus which causes leaves to wilt and yellow and that damages the plant roots. So you have all these components now to a plant. You got the root. It could be also known as a tap root. It's going to be the big one right here. Um, but anyway, the root system, that's got to be healthy. The stem, that's where the leaves are on. The stem has got to be nice and it's got to be healthy. And this is going to hold up a lot of fruit, like your tomatoes, for instance. And then your leaves are another indication that you could be having a problem with that flower, with that root. So this is what I did. I found an issue that was going on with my beans, my snow peas. And what happened is I put these little clips down to kind of guide the plant to go straight up. And I left them on there too long. I almost killed the plant. Because, and I started noticing really quick, the leaves started turning kind of a yellowy looking color. It's because they were being held down by that little plastic pedestal that was trying to make the plant grow straight. I won't do that again. Make sure you look at the leaves. That's going to be your first indication something is wrong. And so I got it just in time, so I was able to save it. Okay, um, now selectively and aggressively thin out plants. Okay, so this is essential because small, weak seedlings are more likely to become diseased. They get sicker quicker, and they in turn may pass the problem on to your healthy plants. So be sure to prune away any dead shoots, branches that restrict airflow. Um, plants need good air circulation to breathe and stay healthy, just like we do. And so this is what I do with my tomato plants. Now, it looked to um, everybody who was looking at the garden that I was just absolutely killing the tomatoes. But it wasn't. What I was doing is I wanted to add airflow. I wanted the fruit to be able to receive air. They've got to have oxygen. So if you're not careful, you're going to have too many leaves that are going to be blocking the way. They're going to be doing two different things. They're going to be blocking sunlight from that fruit. Now I'm not talking about having so much sunlight that it blisters. What I'm talking about is they've got to see some sun. If you have too many leaves, it's going to be an issue. Also, if you have too many leaves, too many stems, too, many, too much of that stuff is too much of the good stuff because what that's going to do is take a lot of that growth and a lot of that healthy calcium and a lot of that healthy airflow, the whole works. It's going to take all of that, some of that away from the fruit. So remember this, you want fruit to grow 
and you want it to be big more so than leaves okay <laughs> you got to have some but take some of them away and what I've learned by going to the the master gardening class is you're spending a lot of the time pruning it's not only in the the late winter time okay now the other thing that you want to do right here is you want to water plants look at that look at those essential bugs right there we're going to talk about that in just a minute I think I got ahead of myself you need to water your plants early in the morning okay I used to sometimes I would do it in the morning sometimes I would do it in the afternoon so what I have learned this is a true fact right here why because well plants primarily need water to help with photosynthesis that's important which occurs during the day also if you water later in the day the leaves are going to be damp during the cooler night time and it's an ideal um, condition for promoting fungus and other diseases so I've noticed my plants are a lot healthier since I watered and I feel watered them this morning so watering in the morning hours versus in the evening hours okay now when you do water soak the roots rather than getting the foliage wet so when you do water soak the roots rather than getting all the leaves and everything wet soaker or drip hoses are a good investment and it's just a good way to keep disease down and again it's I've seen people spray I, I've seen I, I passed by businesses where they would have a sprinkler system out oh my goodness whoever set the system up didn't know what they were doing because what they were doing is instead of where the roots are with the plant it was spraying all over the leaves and everything that's not how you do it don't do it that way you're only inviting trouble when you do that control weeds Weeds compete with your plants for valuable resources such as water, nutrients, and sunlight. They also arbor garden insects, pests, and parasites too, so make sure you pull the weeds and their roots completely out of the ground. I remember being a kid pulling, I would think I was pulling roots out. All I was doing was just pulling the, the flowers uh, and the leaves off of the root. you got to get the root so get the whole thing out. Otherwise, it's going to keep going and get bigger too which is going to be another issue keep the garden clean um, removing faded blooms fallen leaves and weeds is important because decaying plant matter is a prime breeding ground for fungus garden bugs and diseases so carry a small pail or bucket with you every time you enter the garden and use that for collecting litter make sure you use insect traps okay so yellow sticky cards are available at most garden centers you can find those but you know something else you can use yeah duct tape <laughs> get duct tape and put that out there and you both stick to it they can't get away we use duct tape for everything um, now when placed on the ground in between the shoots or branches of plants they'll catch many of those garden bugs that are traveling through the garden so again duct tape works good and it'd be cheaper than buying these sticky guards okay add beneficial insects do that that's what we got to just a few minutes ago ladybugs they can be invaluable in the fight against garden insects. They eat aphids, um, mites, and eggs, and larvae of many of those destructive insects. You want to love those ladybugs. Other beneficial garden bugs include praying mantises, lace wings, parasite wasp. I know you think about a wasp and get stung, but parasitic wasp are good. Most beneficial insects can be purchased from large horticultural supply companies. And your county extension agent also can help you determine the quantity you need for your garden. And we got real good ones here in Alabama, all over the United States. Make sure you go in ahead and, and keep a good plug-in with them, okay? Now, one important thing is don't use any chemicals for 10 days before releasing those insects. Or, guess what? You're not going to have them. Let's go into a commercial break. We're going to be right back in just a minute. At Limon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to limonsmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Let 
Rhonda at Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC take the burden off you for all your tax needs. I know because Rhonda has been taking care of my business since 2013. I feel Rhonda works for me because she knows the direct questions to ask to better benefit my unique business in order for me to get back the biggest refund possible. Rhonda is an ongoing student, and she knows tax laws are in a constant change every year. Call 256-281-9903 for an appointment to take the dread out of getting your taxes done. Rhonda is located at 11968 U.S. Highway 431 in Boaz. Again, that number is 256-281-9903. And let Rhonda's Elite Tax LLC champion your personal and business taxes. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, towards a Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blunt Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Okay, we're back. We're talking about gardening and the clean, natural way to get rid of insects, okay? There's some good ones, but there's some bad ones. Okay, practice crop rotation. This is something we learned in class. I think it was really awesome. So if you grow the same crop in the same place every year, the specific garden bugs that attack that crop will stay in the area. They're not going to go bye-bye. So waiting for the next spring, planning is what they're waiting for. Rotating crops help keep the viral soil nutrients from being depleted. For instance, plant um, like beans and stuff like that, which put nitrogen into the soil where you planted last tomatoes, corns, and squash, which can deplete the nitrogen in the soil. So you can just rotate those two crops. Get your beans where the tomatoes were and the tomatoes where the beans were. That's going to help take care of that. Pinch off dead or infested leaves. Do that because when you see signs of diseased leaves, you need to pluck those things off. And this will stop them from contaminating the entire plant. So on some of the blackberries that we have, there are blackberries coming out all over the place. But we saw some Japanese beetles. Uh, not a good thing. So we did two things that are natural. First of all, um, I got my clips out and we got rid of all those branches that had it. They were just like like living on there they wouldn't leave so we went on and just got rid of them and get rid of all the bad disease looking leaves and then Phil made a solution of hydrogen peroxide and water and then he sprayed that on the plant and I've not seen any more come back okay they don't like that you need to make a solution I forgot what the exact measurement it is I think it's a quarter you need to look it up on the line but I th I'm pretty sure it was a quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide to one gallon of water. Okay, so that gets that. Okay, more ways to keep bugs and birds out of your garden. 
So this is what the author says. Insect-eating birds, such as eastern bluebirds, can provide a valuable service in pest control. So she said, we put a bluebird house at the edge of our garden, and the birds manage the bugs for us. The plants lure the bird, the bugs, which is an easy meal for the bluebirds. It says birds includes um, reader Monica Parrington of Raleigh, North Carolina. Boy, I miss North Carolina. Some good folks live out there. Um, also, she says, I grow mostly native trees. And, um, and, and this is really important, too. So my friend, Miss Baker with Baker Farms, is telling me about this. And I got some of her perennials and shrubs and stuff. Um, and now the plants that play host to certain insects sex may attract a variety of birds. It's a win-win situation that requires no management from me, says um, Birds and Blooms reader Sarah Miller of Avondale Estates, Georgia. She also says, to control ants, I sprinkle cinnamon along their trails and on their heels. And that's how she gets rid of them. Okay, now this is a good one. Um, which is about Japanese beetles invading the garden every spring. She says, I put a squirt of lemon Ajax dish soap. And that's what Phil used. So a squirt of lemon Ajax dish soap and a cup of water in a pot, then knock the beetles into the pot, she says. So um, also companion planting. Um, and let's talk about that just for a second. I think it's probably on this one right here. Okay, so one of the one of this author's favorite combinations is alternating rows of carrots and onions. Together they keep the carrot flies and the onion magnets away. I, I love the idea of companion planting. Um, so to keep slugs from eating tender young foliage, use horticulture grade um, and it's something that's in the earth. It's called diamacatosis earth sprinkled around the plants. Fresh herbs such as lemon balm also keep bad bugs away. Um, and I got plenty of that. I'm not sure I keep it. So I want to talk about um, if we've got time, and I think we've got just a few minutes, and this is how to keep squash bugs out of your garden. Oh man, I hate those things. Look at this. This is what a squash bug looks like. They are the most ugliest, hideous, stinking, and oh, we call them stink bugs too. Um, but they are just, they're, they're awful. And once they get started, it's hard to get rid of them. So this also says, if you're a gourd lover, here's how to keep squash bugs out of your garden so they don't ruin your pies, pumpkins, and your cucumbers. And I saw a few of them. So this is what a squash bug is. Um, they're well known to farmers and, and backyard gardeners. Unless you've cultivated gourds or squash, um, zucchini, pumpkins, cucumbers, melon, you may not have encountered this bug. We have. So here's what you need to know about squash bugs and how to keep them out of your vegetable garden. So what are they? They're defined as a true bug. Squash bugs are insects with kind of like needle-like little mouth parts that suck the life out of the young tender plants by extracting subsurface fluids. Now looking kind of like, a, they look like a stink bug. Squash bugs measure around 5-8 inches long. They're dark gray to darkish brown gray with orange and brown stripes on their abdomens. So dealing with a box elder bug infestation, we're going to tell you how to do that in just a second. Now, their tiny oval-shaped eggs are, are typically copper or bronze, and they're about 1 16th of an inch long. Eggs hatch in about 10 days, and they go through five stages of growth until they reach full maturity in around four to six weeks. Um, now, the young nymphs start out with light green bodies with black heads and legs. Now, as they grow, they turn light gray and finally to a brownish gray. So, how does it to squash bugs damage and yield, uh, damage yards and gardens? Okay, these prob problematic pests are capable of laying tons of tiny eggs on the underside of leaves. Now, if they're left unchecked, they can kill your plants, and they also can um, transmit, they call it the CYVD disease. It's a bacteria type disease that, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, could result in serious losses to crops. So, early detection is critical. Okay, um, and another thing you can do, and we learned about this in class. So, 
you can put down white plastic and this is a natural way to get rid of them. Put down your white plant. Okay, get, get ready for the, for the summer garden, but you need to do this in the fall of the year. Okay, just like I said before, with the black plastic, if you'll use white, good, durable plastic, it's got, it's, that's a must. So you put that down. And what happens when you do put your plants in, keep the plastic there, because what's going to happen is that white is going to reflect light. And those stinky bugs there, they like to go under the leaves. They want to be under it. So what's going to happen is that white, see that, that white is going up against my light right there, so you can see my hand right there. What's going to happen is that's going to reflect, and the bugs are just going to fall off. You're lucky that they go the underside. That's what They think they're creating havoc. And they are, but if you can get them just in time, you're going to be okay. Now let's talk about how to get rid of those nasty bugs. Okay, you want to scrape the eggs stuck to the underside and stem of leaves and smash them so they don't hatch into nymphs, okay? Now if you see the nymphs, you want to pick them off the plants like ASAP. Now they can't sting you or anything like that, they're just ugly. Okay, because the adult squash bugs are harder to kill so if you get, get them when they're little then you're, you're, you're in good shape now introduce parasite insects like the trigonoid fly which lay their eggs around the thoraxes of squash bugs now when the fly eggs hatch the larvae burr into the squash bugs body and it will slowly kill it now insecticides are available to home gardeners, they're generally not as effective against the adult bugs, though. However, targeting immature nymphs has shown some success. Now, how to prevent them? We've got just about a minute left. Okay, keep your plants healthy. You want to fertilize properly and water regularly, okay? Um, also, plant early to cultivate larger plants, which tend to be hardier and more resistant against those squash bugs. During the growing season, remove debris to eliminate spaces for the squash bugs to hide. You want to clean up, clean up the cucurbit bit plant matter in the fall to reduce the number of squash bugs that are going to hang around during the winter months. And another thing, again, engage in, compa in companion planting. It's a method that uses other plants for pest deterrence. Um, radishes are included in that marigolds. I keep marigolds all over the garden. That's the best thing you can do and they're so easy to grow. Save, okay, you want to get one marigold. Out of one marigold, the, the, the flower of it on the inside is where all the seeds are. If you get just one, just sacrifice one and save it, let it dry out, let it go into seed and then in, in the, as quick as you possibly can, like, see, I've got a greenhouse, and you can also do it inside your house, okay? Just make sure that you've got a good bit of sunshine coming through a window. If you'll plant those, you're going to have some marigold plants, and you're not going to have to go spend like $6 a piece. They went up in price. You won't have to spend $6 a piece for them. You will have hundreds of plants just out of one. Now, I saved mine. Make sure air doesn't go to it. Keep it in the freezer, okay? That's the best way to do it. Um, that's one of your best, best things you can plant out in your garden is marigolds. Um, bee balm and catnip also do a real good job repelling squash bugs. Make sure that you use floating row covers to create a barrier that prevents bugs from feeding and laying eggs on your plants. I hope you learned something. And um, this is a real easy thing to do. You're not spending a whole bunch of money. You're doing it the natural way, but save at least one marigold plant. You'll be glad you did. Okay. Oh, marigold bloom. That's where the seeds are. Okay, thank you so much for watching.